So this is Nursing 622, Module 3, with gender-related health problems focusing on the male. Your objectors, objectives to identify the health screenings males should have, determine the diagnosis and treatment, mortality, morbidity of the male gender. Getting a good history once again, looking at symptoms, fever, is there any abdominal pain? Is there any back pain, flank pain? How are they voiding? Are they having difficulty voiding? Are they having a steady stream while they're voiding? Do they have that urgency, that frequency, that pressure? Any GI complications or issues, diarrhea, constipation, and then again, sexual activity or abuse. Looking at the family history, any past history of UTIs, other disorders such as benign prostate hyper, hypertrophy or prostatitis or testicular torsion, those things are important. <clears throat> Looking at the physical examination, again, uh, blood pressure, edema, hydration, looking for the ear position information. Why? Because we're looking for those low set ears. We know that there's a higher incidence with chromosomal abnormalities with renal issues. Abdominal masses, tenderness, any CVA tenderness, external genitalia abnormalities. Do they have both testicles? Do they have an undescended testicle? And any unusual facial features? And again, this looks at your genetics to see what your risk factors are. Diagnostic studies are as indicated by looking at the physical characteristics. And then the chemical characteristics of the breakdown of the urine. A urinalysis should be performed. You can screen with a urine dipstick and then further investigate with a urinalysis which gives you that microscopic examination of the urine, looking for blood, looking for the WBCs with, you know, the leukocytes, bacteria, cast, crystals. You will, as sometimes, see spermatozoa in the microscopic examination. Why? Because when men ejaculate, the spermatozoa can still be in there, so that's not uncommon. A gram stain to look at organisms. Urine cultures are very important. Men with GU concerns or complaints, getting a urine culture to know what that sensitivity is. And then again, the 24 hour urine comes into play with your diabetics, hypertension, and those types of diseases. Blood work, BUN and creatinine. We know that's our renal function. We wanna see if there's any elevation, see how their electrolytes, their sodium, their potassium, how is their calcium? Look at their procalcitonin. Doing an ultrasound, this is non-invasive. We can see a lot of structures in the testicles and the GU system by using an ultrasound. You can use a voiding pattern with the VUR with the urosonography to take a look. Um, there's the DMSA that looks for acute pyelonephritis. And then there's the cystourethrogram, which is normally used if the DMSA um, is abnormal or an ultrasound is abnormal or if there's been a reoccurrence of urinary tract infections. Again, management strategies, education and counseling, looking at medication, diet, and then referral. Know what you don't know. If it's abnormal and they have something that needs further workup, you have urologists, you have nephrologists that focus on the kidneys, and then ultimately a surgeon, as in the case of a testicular torsion, which is a surgical emergency, who they would normally see in the emergency room. Nocturia men, we know nocturia is the frequency of urination at night. It can be in large volumes, it can be small quantities. Um, you can have, again, that polyuria, maybe they're a new onset diabetic or haven't been diagnosed yet. Looking for signs of the prostate problem. They're having difficulty starting or stopping a stream. They're having dribbling. Men can have pelvic pain. They can have GI issues causing genital urinary issues, puts pressure on that prostate. There can be back issues, musculoskeletal issues that can cause the pain and dysfunction. Chronic pelvic pain in men. Um, alpha blockers can reduce that bladder, neck, urethral spasms. You can look at warm sits baths, um, the diazepam, psychotherapy. These are all interventions that can be done. Testicular pain, that fullness or heaviness of the scrotum. It could be a dull ache, it could be a sticking pain. What kind of underwear do they wear? Do they wear underwear? Do they wear boxers, briefs? This can give you a clue into some of that testicular pain if you don't have that scrotal support. 
And then doing a scrotal ultrasound is always indicated with testicular pain. Again, once you have decreased blood flow, you have six hours for a testicular torsion. Once the testicle is gone, it is gone. You have to understand that and understand the urgency that an immediate ultrasound, and this likely includes going directly to the emergency room. Testosterone deficiency can be due to hypogonadism, it can be due to age, it can be used due to medications, cardiovascular disease. Taking a good health history is going to help clue you in if there is an issue. And again, you refer out. If they have these issues, refer out to the specialist. That's why we have them. Decreased libido. A lot of men will not take certain medications like beta blockers because it decreases their libido. Mastitis. Men can have mastitis. They can have inflammation in the breast. They can have the same flu-like symptoms that women have. And again, you look at the same thing. Nipple discharge, retraction, breast pain, fevers, swelling, redness. Management is still the same. You massage, moist heat, stress management, and sometimes antibiotics are indicated. Benign prosthetic hyperplasia is the most common, usually over the age of 40. Um, you can do your analysis, the PSAs that should be done, urine cultures, urine cytology, because again, we want to make sure that we are ruling out any other cause. Urine cytology is going to look for those cancer cells. Prostatitis can be acute, chronic. It doesn't always have to be bacterial, which is usually the most common. They can be asymptomatic or they can be pretty symptomatic and they refer to it as a UTI. Usually this is in your sexually active men that are between the age of 30 and 50. And again, your testing is CBC, a urinalysis, which should always include a urine culture. And then CTs or ultrasounds as needed and possibly a biopsy. Because again, we want to make sure we're not missing anything. Make sure that there's no prostate cancer and this is a secondary from that prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, 95% are, you know, the adenocarcinomas. Second in the number of cancer deaths in men, they are usually asymptomatic early on, which is why preventative testing and screening is so important associated with that family health history. Latent symptoms could be bone pain, weight loss, the shortness of breath, lymph nodes swollen in the groins, that warrants further investigation. Lymph nodes swollen in the groin without an acute inflammatory, or even if it is acute inflammatory, until you have ruled out anything else otherwise, must be further investigated. Erectile dysfunction. It doesn't mean that they can't obtain an erection, but it's failure to consistently maintain that um, erection. 25% of men older than the age of 65 have ED, and remember those concerns we have before you start prescribing ED medication. You need to know their cardiovascular risk factors. You need to know, are they on any vasodilators? Because we know the medication for erectile dysfunction is going to be a vasodilator, right? And we don't want them having that hypotension and potentially causing worse outcomes. Epididymitis is an inflammation of the epididymitis. Sometimes they'll come in with unilateral painful testicles. Again, an ultrasound is warranted, and this is where you can obtain your diagnosis and refer out to urology. Testicular torsion. This is a medical emergency. You have six hours before you have ischemic necrosis of those testes. Once they are gone, they are gone. No more. This results in a twisting or a rotation of the testes. It can be from an injury or a trauma or nothing at all. Hydrocele, collection of that fluid within the scrotum around the testes. And that can be very painful or it doesn't have to be painful. Sometimes it needs intervention, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the symptoms and it depends on the size. Again, getting an ultrasound and getting diagnostics, imaging of what's going on and then referring them out. Variceal is an abnormal degree of venous dilatation of that plexus above the testes, results in pain, engorgement of the testes. Most oftentimes, these patients are symptomatic. They say, hey, one side's bigger than the other and it really hurts, something's going on. Ultrasound, refer out if it's something abnormal. Testicular cancer, tumors of the germ cells and the seminiferous tubules is the most common testicular carcinoma. You can do your screening tools like we have talked about. Again, urine for cytology can also look for those cancer markers. 
Epidemiology and causes of STIs, it's the most prevalent communicable diseases. You can have an increased risk due to ethnic backgrounds, a number of par partners, lack of health care. And again, sexually transmitted diseases are important because if they left untreated, can cause further genital urinary problems. The pathophysiology, once you have one, it can lead to an increased risk for another one. The diagnostic reasoning is some men will not have any symptoms at all. If there is an exposure, they should be tested and then treated accordingly. Screening is always recommended. You do a urine for a microscope, a culture. You can do the nucleic acid amplification testing. You can do the first voided urine to look for GC and chlamydia. Again, making sure you're doing those screening tools. Primary prevention is key. Management, the goals is making a correct diagnosis. The appropriate treatment, the CDC has guidelines for treatment of STDs, it's readily available online. It is there for your use. If you do not do this frequently, always refer back. Patient education, risk reducing behavior, and again, those primary, secondary, and tertiary preventative measures and education are so key here. And again, the takeaway is if you See something that's abnormal, know what you don't know, refer out. That is always the key. Find somebody else who specializes in this, urology, nephrology, surgeons, those types of people, and understanding those medical emergencies that need immediate intervention. And your textbook reading and additional resources for you.